Awesome. Welcome. Cool. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, sorry about that. That was completely on me. Uh, Adam was not late or anything. He wasn't stuck in the uh, green room being a prima donna and like making sure <laughs> that everything was perfect. Uh, that was completely me. First stream, lots of mistakes. Uh, apparently, you need a whole fun setup to get audio from inside your computer to another app inside your computer. So I, I learned a lot today, um, and we haven't even gotten started. So my brain's almost full, but I'm sure we can pull it with a lot more. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry for being late. Uh, welcome to the Thoroughbred Front End Web Dev Newsletter Now live stream. Uh, it's awesome to have everyone who's here in chat on stream, and it is even more awesome to have Adam Kuhn here with us. Adam, it's great to see you. Hey, likewise. Good to see you. We yeah, did it. Uh, we got it all figured out. Yeah, we, we did. We, uh, thank you for hanging with me. You've been on the call with me for a little over an hour already. So if you get tired of, of this, uh, you are free to bail. I'm happy to go through <laughs> your code pens all by myself. Um, sure. Yeah, so thank you so much. Um, everyone in chat, thank you for, for hanging in there. So, Adam, I am just th thrilled to have you on. You were actually in the very first newsletter, and so I think it's kind of appropriate that you are on the very first episode of the live stream. This is really cool. Um, I have been asked a lot, and I think I'm going to kind of just cut right to the question that's been on a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. Um... Is front end horse now a media empire? Because I mean, because I mean, like newsletter and then live stream. I mean, what's your take? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think the next stop is uh, like a, probably a theme park, route, right? So um, probably, yeah. I, I think yeah. I'm thinking theme park. I'm going for the EGOT eventually, and I think front end horse is that vehicle. Um, so yeah, I, you're I gonna want to get some koozies. I think like that's uh, that's that's definitely the next step in your journey. Like a so. beer koozie. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you print up some of those. Like that's. I that's think that's important. that might be one of the requirements for a media empire. I I, th I think you're yeah. onto something there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotta, I think a couple of my old companies are technically media empires because we we jumped to Koozie before we like had MVP of an app. So I I, I think oh, they're nice. nice. I think the priorities are uh, right right where they need to be. No, it's good. Uh, that's how you know you made it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we actually picked out a, a few code pens that we're going to be diving into. Um, I wanted to start first with the one that you just put out today. Um, I can see that my computer is really chugging along, so we might be in for some, uh, some crashes, some, some more technical difficulties, who knows, <laughs> but, uh, that, that, that scroll lag is not just on your end, people. This is, uh, happening for real. Um, I... I'm going to see if this works. So this is a, I'm, I'm kind of checking over there to make sure that we've still got OBS running. Awesome. So um, Adam made this today. I am really, really pumped to be able to demo this and it's working great, honestly. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, so this week's code pen is what, Adam? Uh, it's a, t the theme was take on me by aha, which I think was, uh, the instructions, uh, delivered us, uh, like a three color palette, which was all like pale renditions of purples or blues basically. So, um, yeah, I kind of went more of a literal route and, and did a, did a little webcam experiment. So, uh, it's, it's so good. It's so much fun. If, if you're not familiar with the music video, Adam's got, uh, oh, put in the wrong direction. Adam's got little snippets from the video, little gifts. It's like half sketched, half real, and it's 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 a super ridiculous video. And I'm pretty sure that's why they picked it for CodePen, right? Like like that was part of the thing. So like it's kind of perfect that oh, I'm over here. Here we go. Um, <laughs> that uh, it this is half sketch, half real. It's just, it's just so much fun. Um, so first off, I think the the thing we we might want to do actually. I was going to say, how do we stop it? But I think we we, we might want to keep it on to, to see the changes. So uh, what's going on here? How, how are you pulling yeah. this off? Yeah, so so I would actually, it would be awesome to open it myself, but I'm not going to do that because it, it, we're probably going to just fry everybody's system at this point. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of look along. Uh, but basically what's happening here, like to achieve this effect for the camera is we are grabbing like the data from the webcam um, right, and translating it to Canvas, and then using Canvas to uh, draw an image 
And so what you're basically seeing is, is an image that's being refreshed. And like, uh, so I just used like a standard, like set interval to, to just keep that loop going. Um, and what I did was set that a little bit on the lower side so that it was kind of that same choppy sketched effect that you see uh, in the okay. actual so, music video. So this is the, okay. So it's happening every right there. 200 milliseconds, right? Yep. Yep. And so, so it's not like a 60 frames per second kind of thing. It's, it's, it's a, it's a bit choppier than that. Right. Right. So, so yeah, so, so that's, that's kind of chopped up. And then what you see there is like three renditions of the image being rendered, um, every 200 milliseconds and each one has like its own uh its own uh filter applied to it so what we're doing is like obviously knocking all the color out of it uh upping the brightness uh and the contrast and then adding some blur to kind of like give it that sort of gooey effect so that um the lines are are cleaner and a little more smoothed out so got it and then do you uh, you you bump the contrast to make them sharp again or um or are they just to a degree there's, there's only like a yeah like right so the contrast I, I don't know if you've ever played with like a gooey type of filter uh oh. sans svg but the way that no. you can achieve that in css is to like like massively uh uh up the blur and then and then apply like a contrast filter to that so you effectively taken you know a shape and blurred it uh to where it would be like a you know a blob of its normal form like a and then, solid color kind of thing. right right and then bumping the contrast will like like my once shirt again. just kind of blurred there and then yeah that's... Mm -hmm. so where's yeah. like the heavy lifting happening here is it is it mainly is it across all three or is it mainly in the css or so like what, what's really happening then is like these these images i'm using three of them for like a light mid and dark uh like color uh, range and... so so uh the oh, I, I forgot that when i hover does that um, yep so the mid is these sketches, right? Or or is that or is that the light? The uh, the the hash marks or whatever. I, uh, sure. yeah, that's the mid. Like so. The, okay. So the yeah. lines are 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 the mid, and then there's the the dark and light, which which you can see. Um, but but those are they're actually being applied as SVG masks. So like, rather than just rendering the image itself, like it's a mask, so that I'm able to use like those. Uh, those sketch lines as sort of like a background image. So um, it's like, a, it's a trick that I've kind of used before. And, and actually like Stephen Shaw sort of like helped me figure this one out. The performance is, is pretty rough because you're talking, you know, like a pretty high refresh rate, like, and, and just rendering image after image after image. Uh, but this is a pretty good use case because it needs to be choppy. So if I were to bump that, if I were to bump that set interval down to like, you know, five milliseconds, it wouldn't be a whole lot faster just because it can't keep up with because it's running. processing. Yeah. So like if right, we right. bump this to here and let it re build, let's hope my computer can handle it. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's so it's, it's definitely a bit, yeah, it's a bit smoother for sure, but it's still definitely uh, chugging along just a little, a little. I'm just happy that yep. we are still up, up and running. We got some people in the <laughs> chat. We got Talkaholic, got Collab TV coming through. Pete Barr, good to see oh, you all. Right. Thanks for coming through. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So, how can we kind of tweak this to kind of see some some more effects? Like, I I I love getting in and kind of figuring out which numbers we can mess with to uh, either make it brighter or darker, or like make the thickness of the lines bigger. I mean, like like yeah, what are yeah. Some fun things to to play uh, with here. It's pretty tough. Like you you can you can toy around with those with those canvas filters that you see. Um, you know, for each of those images. Um, and that basically handles like the, the color separation. Uh, but the other thing that you could do um, is to go up to where those those masked elements are rendered. Uh, yeah, so I've, the, I've got the, backgrounds. Like the mid right now. So this is all just, uh, yep. this is all just light and dark. Cool. So change yep. the backgrounds where? Uh, like if you go up to um, uh, the elements that are being that are being masked, uh, you'll probably like want to in the HTML, search. the CSS. In the CSS, if you search okay, for cool. uh, if you search for like a repeating linear gradient, then you'll see the uh, the sketch lines, uh, and it won't be that one. So that's be that's a uh, that's on the video itself. So when you look at the video, there's like a slight. Uh, Mix blend mode overlay to, to Okay, so I'm not as familiar with repeating linear gradients. What's the difference there? I mean, I, I think mm -hmm. it's, in, it's in the name, but like, what's like, how does that work? 
Yeah. So, I mean, like if you want to achieve like some like horizontal lines or, you know, at, in this instance, I've got both 40 and 45 degree lines so that the, the lines sort of uh, zigzag back and forth. Okay. Um, so if you, if you, if you'd like to do that, like this is one way to accomplish it. So it'll basically, you define like the pixel range and there's actually a more efficient way to handle it. I think than this is, this is more lines than it actually needs to be. Um, but but yeah, so oh, so repeating like this is more lines of code, like like you could have done this in just a couple. Yeah, I think of these, I think so there's a, there's a way yeah. a way to reduce that actually. So, um, but it's it's kind of all good. We were kind of saying b before the uh, stream that like CodePen is honestly like the place where you just you you can break stuff and you can make it a little inefficient. Like honestly, this isn't like a code yeah. purity place to me at least. I don't know, but um, this is just like a a site where you make a lot of fun things and uh if the code's a little bit n not optimal it's all good as long i mean like yep. this yeah. is so much fun i think i think, I think I, the, I the disclaimer i like to apply is that like don't don't build bad habits though you know because, because oh I've that's a very good point i've certainly done that you know it's, it's like you know from both performance and accessibility standpoints like it's really easy to to just like oh i know how i can accomplish this with like you know just in pure CSS, but it's like, that, like that, that's not a good use case necessarily in a production environment. So no, you certainly have to be like careful about that. There's, there's, there's costs that come with those sort of things. So, um, so if we like hit like Dodger blue on this, by the way, my favorite, um, <laughs> Dodger blue, my favorite CSS named color is, is, is that what you would call it? Yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of blue in there. Got yeah. A little bit of blue. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're doing is like, that's, that's just like one part of the, of the linear gradient. So like, all of those four, four, four. You'd want to go Dodger blue to get those lines, like. So, so yeah. I mean, it's it's a bit of a you know just kind of a chore to do that. But that and then sense. I think the the white alternate the that SAS variable that you see there is effectively white smoke, which is like my favorite. <laughs> nice. Pretty awesome name. There we go. Yeah, we got some legit Dodger blue there. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Like Dodger blue and like Rebecca purple and a few others are just like. These kind of pass for actual colors, where a lot of them they're just like, I don't know, that's not yep. my color. Yeah, but the good troubleshooting yep. ones. This is awesome. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. three images, and then this is just a a, a, a cool effect that kind of reveals the actual webcam input. Like, there's nothing that's going on here, right? Yeah. There's a there's just like a, a filter. I use that. Yeah. There's a mix blend mode like overlay, and then I knocked cool. uh, I knocked back the the. Uh, uh, saturation of the video just a little bit too to be more consistent with like those 80s videos because uh you know i watched like the music video itself and it was like it looked pretty washed out like even in the just the live action shots so i, th I thought that would help the effect a little bit but the vhs look yep yeah yeah that's perfect and then like on the borders there it's like there's svg filter applied there as well to give it that Got sort it. of squiggly effect which is you know I, it's think, so good. I think everybody's familiar with the old squiggle vision which is a just like awesome effect all around so yeah i mean do you want to mention that just super quick in case mm -hmm. people aren't yep yeah oh yeah absolutely so so it, like CSS. it's using an svg turbulence filter um that that that's very very subtly set so yeah if you look up there and go to the squiggle um, is that what it's called yep it's um, UI. yeah that'll nice. get you there svg squiggle yep so if you look at the uh, the turbulence and displacement there, uh, cool. also relatively low. Uh, if you bump that up, you'll see it kind of go crazy. And then what will really make it nuts is if you bump up that scale. So if you go to the displacement map and knock it to like 20 so, versus 2. To like, this one? Yeah, yeah. Then, right, then cool. things get, get pretty wild. So, um, By the way, I, I just want to like say to anyone who's kind of looking through this and, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, that yeah. super crazy. That's like oh, a yeah. KG now. That's oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, to anyone who like checks this stuff out, what I do a lot of times because I'm not too well versed in in, in Hamel, um, I love this aspect of CodePen. The view compiled HTML, um, and it just makes it readable to people who don't know Hamel. So just a just a tip if you're also trying to like figure this stuff out and you just see uh, what doesn't look like HTML because it's not. Uh, grab the actual compiled HTML will help you figure it out a lot more. So yeah, in the interest of full disclosure, like I'm not well versed in Hamel either. Um, 
but I know it so far as like I can write some decent loops and things like that. So it makes it yeah. a more efficient way to iterate over like just goofy demos and things like that. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and and I can figure out like what's going on. Like this is nested inside this, but yeah. I can't I can't grok it as easily as I can mm -hmm. just you know like if it's HTML. So it's just yeah, a tip yeah. that I always use when I'm checking yeah. out someone who writes in Pug or in Haml or anything else. Totally. Totally. Um, this is great. So like, I think I think we ruined this sufficiently. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's pretty well mutilated. So nice. like, like one of my other favorite things that's that I've kind of just recently somehow discovered with with these squiggly type filters is, or just any SVG filters in general is that like I can use them as a backdrop filter. Can you go ahead, Adam? And, all right. So we're gonna be over the phone, but also um, still up on the chat thing. So. You still there, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I All right, you. cool. I think this is working. Are we good? Can you all hear me? Let's, let's see, chat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure chat's good to go. So we're just gonna roll, and uh, we will we will catch up. This is very good. All right, cool. So thank you, Taco Holly, for that feedback. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I agree, Swag Killer. I agree. Um, all right, so let's real quick get to as many pens as we can. Um, what is the next one that we had planned out? It was ghosts, right? Sure, yeah. Um, what was it called? Sorry, I don't have my notes in front of me. Generative Things... haunts. Generative haunts, love it. Yeah. One hand typing, because the other hand's holding a speakerphone. Oh, good stuff. All right, so. This one I was checking out earlier when you sent it to me. Um, it's just so much fun. I I think it's like I I think one of the reasons that you grabbed it was because you've been doing, I mean for a while now, um, a bunch of generative work. Let me close take me on because that's gonna leave site. Changes have not been saved. There we go. All right. So like I've seen you do like houses and buildings and cities and towns and like all, all kinds of things with these generative houses. And uh, it's it's wild to me, just like all the different combinations, because like with generative work, you need to have like um, set variables that change and, and get randomized. Right. So like here you've got the, the windows, I'm guessing, that are like are part of those variables. Like Like what are all the different parts that we are? randomizing be between in this piece. Yeah, I think so. It's like the windows, the rooftop shapes, um, yeah, window shapes, like window animations and positions. Um, uh, I think like the, like the general parts, like I think there's always gonna be like large centerpiece and then that's gonna be offset to the left or right or centered uh, various pieces. And then uh, the, the ghosts I think are pretty well set in place but i'm not totally sure it's it's actually it's you know it's been a while since i did this one but it was like a i was kind of just doing a lot of generative stuff at the time so it was like right around halloween time and i like, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun to touch on something together like that so um and then i think i randomized like various angles and things like that too so this was all just like most of the general things that i do are, are just like light manipulation of like css variables um Cool. So yeah. it's mainly happening in in the JavaScript as far as the the, the randomizer goes, right? Like. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's all. That's all just like. A, that's all just a, actually just jQuery stuff, um, which probably doesn't need to be, but just a uh, um, just to update, like CSS pairs. So there's actually like a lot less variance in this than some of the more some of the other generative stuff that I do, but like. Uh, it kind of required a stricter set of rules. So. so, okay, so here's like an, an angle, and this is another angle, so that might like af affect these window angles. Is is that what it is, or like the building angles? Yeah, th no, that's probably going to be the building angles, actually, yeah. So, so uh, potentially the, the windows as well. Like, uh, it's been a while since I, since I put this one together, but, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, it's probably going to be kind of both of them. And then, like, with the ghosts, we get those following motion paths. So like, um, I think, I think I probably just did some weird like random motion paths. And and somebody, some other code pen user built like a really awesome SVG path builder. And I should really look at this. Like, who this was? Was that Jay? No. Uh, I thought Jay had one. It's somebody that's a little more infrequent. 
Anthony Dubois. Okay. Like um, but that SVG pet builder is it's filled with React, and it's like a really sweet way to like quickly whip up like just a, a pet that you can use like for especially for motion pet properties. So can you drop that in the uh, in the Twitch chat? I think yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. gonna be an awesome resource for people. That's super cool. Yeah. It's, it's just so much nicer when you just, like, you don't need anything heavy duty to, like, I don't want to bust open, like, sketch or illustrator to, to deal with that. So it's, like, is, it's such an awesome one. Like, is there, is there a way, real quick, that, that we can um, make the paths v visible so we can see them in, instead of them being transparent? Like, is, is there a quick line of code that you can think of? Um, like, the quickest way to, like, you probably have to, like, add the SVG in place and then... Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it'd, it'd be pretty tricky. Like, so kind of what's happening with the ghosts is like those little blobs. There's probably like six, maybe six parts to each ghost, and then each like uh... Uh, each animation is like offset ever so slightly, and then the opacity is set like uh, you know a little bit lower for you know, got it. Like, for the ghosts. So, so you got each so, yeah. piece of the trail here to for the ghost, and then does the ghost have the actual face on it, like like the. Uh... The, the parent has, has the face, and then each trail right, right. thing is a I little think, bit like, smaller. The first, the first child, like, element has, the, has that face on the pen. But um, if, I think if you really want to see, like, where those paths were, like, you could probably just, like, update the delay on, on those, like, tail elements of the ghost. So, so would, yeah. would that go in which direction, then? Uh, so that would be, uh, yeah, I guess the trail, and there's six of those. So if, if you, that, like, J, uh, divide by 35 there, if you knock that down to something like five, or even just leave it as J, um, then you're going to see, like, it will space out, they'll space out quite a bit more. I think those zero, zero element, you'll want to do the same. Okay, cool. Um, seven. The uh, command shift seven like re rebuild thing in CodePen uh, is absolutely it will, always, it will always do that on CodePen. Like if 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 you have any animated element, then it will always like force like a full. It like, full not not every time I found I'll, I'll 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 sometimes wait and it and it, it it won't do it. Like I I I get what you're saying. Like like I'll sometimes just hit enter and to to make a new line and to get it to rebuild. But sometimes. It like gets stuck and I kind of have to force it, so I've just kind of gotten into a habit, at least lately, especially when there's yeah. like big complex pens. I'm just hitting uh, Command Shift Seven, but okay, cool. So now we've like exploded the path, so all these little pieces flying around are like their previous. Oh, okay, yeah, I see, I see the dots coming through. That's really cool. So you get like a little bit of a feel where those things are going. Not as spooky. This is just more like a bokeh effect. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. And then, and then you also see there's like a mask at the top there too, which is like a massive, like super long base 64 string. Like uh, oh, at the top of the, there. at the top of which I forget where it at was. At the very top of the CSS there, where the where the where the SAS variables are, there's like a there's a noise mask, and that's just okay. Like, yeah. Is that massive. for the bricks? That is that is for like texturing. So like I've I've been using that. I think somebody did a really great pen of like. Of like gradient textures, um, and I, let me find that real quick too, and I'll share it because it's awesome. Uh, That's really cool. So, so the bricks and all all the lines and stuff are just CSS. Like that's 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 coming from this mainly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. cool. So, oh, the, the lines actually, the, the little uh, yeah, the person that you see on the lines. That's again, using like this squiggly SVG. It will be. Oh no. Yeah. No, that's all. That's right, those were all offset, like, and that's just using that mask. So what that does is basically, like, maps out, gives it sort of a almost TV static sort of noise. So um, it's kind of the best way to accomplish more of an organic feel without, like, without, like applying SVG filters. So um, That's so cool. I, I also love that you are moving the moon on, on each regeneration, too. Like, that's just, just such a nice touch. You didn't have to do that, but it adds a uh, lot. I like it, but I, but I also get like this, like, I'm like, oh, man, it, it's cool, like, it's fun to move the moon around a little bit, but also, like, I feel like the light should, the light source should shift a little bit, and I'm like, oh, you know, like, it's, yeah, no, it's just but, so awesome. These are things I do in my spare time, I can't, you know, spend all year messing with light sources. And Absolutely, no, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to perfect, like, some of this stuff would just be kind of crazy. Um, do you want to hop over to the NES? Form? Uh, sure. 
Awesome. Um, or, or, or did you have another thing to say on this? I don't mean to rush you through uh, it. No, no, no. I think, I think we're good to, to go on that. Awesome. Cool. Just had a few, and I, I know we've had a few delays, and I don't want to keep you all night, and I know that uh, people like Pete in the chat have been uh, staying up late. Same with Jay. Yeah. Basically, anyone in Europe or beyond uh, in those time zones. Appreciate you being with us. Um, let's see. Do you know where you called it? I, I don't want to open Notion right now just because I'm afraid that like everything's being held together with like bubble gum and duct tape and uh, God forbid I open a resource intensive app and just bring everything down. It would be uh, eh. it would it would be like the beginning of this. Um, honestly though, if you if you have not seen Adam's code pen, just spend an afternoon going through this like we we chose a few to go through. But we could have gone through any of these. They're all so much fun. Uh, Adam's style is just, it's hilarious. Like, it's Guy Fieri. And you can, like, change the the filter. It's just, like, like this one he did for his, his, his work. And it's just awesome. Like, I could have asked you 100 questions about that. Um, it was it was definitely tough narrowing down what to ask you about. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you sent back a list. It made it a lot easier, so... So thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that Guy Fieri one was, was kind of fun because I just, that's like when I realized that I could use a backdrop filter, right, the SVG filter, and then on top of that, I could scale it. So it kind of, uh, it, it kind of gives it like a weird bubbly motion effect. The only other time I've really been able to like, like effectively animate like a SVG filter just once it's using JS. So that's kind of like a... Gotcha. Um, yeah. yeah. See, like, any of them I could I could learn a ton from. So I definitely uh, I, I highly recommend you just spend an afternoon going through this stuff. It's it's so much fun. Um, awesome. So this one I, I think we need to demo first. Um, I wish I had this. Um, by the way, you sign everyone up for a newsletter or something, right? Like you send it all to spam, correct? This is that's that's what this is for. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. I start tracking all your data as soon as this is. Uh, this is how you make your money. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so you hit submit. I'm just like waiting for everyone to kind of like realize what's happening if you haven't seen this yet. And it all turns into Mario's, and it's just it's so much fun. And you made a whole series of these, and you've got one where uh, they all turn into Mario's and they swim in the water world, and it's like it's it's just it's just so much fun. Oh yeah, this one this one doesn't do all of that. So that one that, that other one uses local storage and will open like a secondary window. Oh uh, right. Where's that one? Let's hop to uh, that one. I can find it for you real fast. Is it World Two Two or Two Four? That's the one. That's the one. Yep. Is it two two? Yep. Alright, cool. So that so, one yeah, like I wasn't totally sure if that's gonna work great for everyone because it's using JS to force open another window so people with, you know, pretty stringent like uh, blockers are probably yeah watching. i'm wondering if we're gonna get a little pop-up thingy here let's see what happens yeah it's so good so yeah more motion pass there we go um always allow pop-ups from code pen that could never yeah. go poorly uh do i need to redo it yeah pop-up blocks so yeah I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you do, so. so i'm just gonna do uh a little bit faster it's one one-handed typing isn't as easy but um, so that that whole thing. So like you've got a lot going on here. Um, just off the bat, oh, that's so good. <laughs> and it's the same letters. Oh, it's not popping up again. What? What? Did the other window pop up? Oh, can they not see it? Oh shoot! Yeah. All right, everybody. Yeah, I'm only screaming <laughs> the 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 one Chrome browser. All right, so. Um, I don't know if you if you open the other one and then like. Just refresh it. It's in local storage, so it'll probably remain in local storage. If I do this one, or the like, the pop up. Yeah, the two two. I think this is, is it, or is that this is two two. This is two two. It's yeah, it's it's, it's all good. It's all good. We uh, let's jump into um, how the heck are you doing the Mario's and and the motion paths of, of like like the swimming paths are really cool. How how are you doing all that? Like that's yeah yeah so. So again, that's like that's like the same kind of motion path trickery. 
Okay, uh, but 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 they all have like different ones. It seemed like. Yeah, or... it, it, there's probably like three to four different ones set, right? And and at some point, like I wanted them all to be unique, or at least like through an, a larger number. But I got kind of tired of it, and and getting those lined up is a little bit difficult because you have to account for the offset of each character. So like, um, one thing that I'm doing here is using scene shots, like splitting to the, upon submission. I was about upon, to say, I, mean, I think upon each jQuery and splitting. Is, it's like applying so like those letters that you're typing are not actually like the letters that you're typing in the field itself they're letters that are being appended after each like key up event oh uh, okay so as soon as i start typing you're just adding like what is that like a a div or something that, that, that yeah, you're yeah, tossing in there and letters within like a span or whatever i i think i use splitting in this instance it's it's kind of not really totally necessary but i'm just comfortable with it um but that way i'm also able to control like the exact because it because the letter itself is attached as like a pseudo, then I can define the span that it's wrapped in. I can give it like uh, a predefined width, so that makes it a lot easier when you're trying to line up like how far does this thing need to swim to get to that pipe. So uh, where is that happening? Um, is it in the JavaScript? Sorry, I'm, I'm like I have no idea yeah, where this. Yeah, it should be in the JS. Um, window timer it? if closed, no. Um, window open. Okay, so that's so this will trigger the pop up right right here on line thirty one, right? So this is on submit. Yeah, yeah. So so that's on submit. Okay, uh, on key press. Here we go. If thirty two return false. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see where. Oh wait, here we go. Up oh, email key up. It happens right at the top. Here we go. So email text email field p remove. And oh, so you're removing field P. I'm, I'm, I'm taking the whole thing away and, and reapplying it like on every key up. Okay. This is way more than it needs to be. And I think, I think after I did that, I, I like, immediately was like, why? This is, this is a little overkill, right? So there's, there's certainly a better way to do that. But yeah, so on every, on every key up, it's like grabbing the, the data from that field and applying it like. And also calling like the splitting function to split it all into individual spans. So got it. And um, and is this putting it inside of an, an input? It's putting it inside the that element that you see that's visible right there, like the white element with the DFG that you've got typed right. up is not the input field. Like that's a that's a secondary like element that got uh, it. it's applying that span to. So and that's like I so said, cool. because I'm able to like have those each wrapped as their own element that I can I can really easily define like the, the width for each one. So it helps me um, as far as defining what kind of distance it's gonna take for those things to swim to the little tube. So cool. So then so then here's on submit. Um, you have a blur on oh, what does that do? That, that that's not important. Um, add class swim, so I'm, I'm guessing that adds the Mario body and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. And and so that's uh yeah that's and I think that's yeah, that's adding that to the entire wrapping element and then what happens from there as far as the animation goes is I I took like a sprite sheet and an animation like directly from like the old NES archives and uh, like that. So, is, okay, so that's. Here is is that part of it there? Like, would that be uh, one of those? Oh no! So that's that's the bottom there. Cool. Yep. Yep. So. All right. So if we look for swim, maybe. Um, let me see here. Keyframe swim from offset distance zero. So the offset distance, I don't think I've ever used that. What does offset distance do? So offset distance like tells you how far along that offset path you want the element. Ah, uh, okay. And where are we setting the offset path? Uh, the path is set under the bit character span. So uh, yeah, if you just if you just um, search for offset path. You'll, you'll, I think it's probably the only one that's. And then what we're doing with the sprite sheet animation is just like 
you know, the standard uh, uh, um, step animation style, which is, like, always throws me for a loop because it's, I always try to plug in, like, one extra step that needs to be there, like, calculating that, like, the movement of the background image, like, currently, is, for some reason, becomes problematic to me, but... Got it. Okay, so so uh, this is applying two paths, so uh, even and odd, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Great. So so you've you've got the two paths, so that's why it's kind of like um, every other one has the path that they follow. So I'm gonna see it in in action again. Oh, did it just break? Oh, there we go. Yeah, they kind of split into twos. Oh, uh, uh, I thought it was, that seemed like three, and then the thing pops up. It seemed like three paths, but it's not super important. But it's just such a cool effect, and then you've, you've got the pipe animating and everything, and then the pop-up is just so good. And then you pass the data in, into the pop-up window open, and then you pass through... Where are you passing the actual data to that? How does that get the the email? Yep, so that's like local storage. So that's the very... Oh, that's that, makes like that makes sense. That makes sense. That's clever. That's a really clever use of, of, of local storage. So you don't have to pass it to, to that. It's just going to read from the same local storage because the local storage is saved to CodePen, right? Yeah, well, it's actually saved like locally on, on your devices. Like Sorry. So yeah, yeah. Like you can, that's why you could you could take that like the next screen and then open it within that window and it would still be stored there. So I don't because I don't think I clear it in the next one. So, so you should be able to, to like load that independently and then have like the secondary action. So right. So I, I'm I'm into the CodePen domain like it's un, unique to the CodePen domain. So the other window because it's on CodePen can access yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry. Um, awesome. This is just uh, honestly this is one of my favorites. Um, also, the roller coaster that's like pretty similar, I I would think, right? Like that's got like a different set of motion paths and everything. It's just very, very such similar. a cool idea. I, yeah, I got into like a really weird phase of just doing like a whole ton of uh, yeah. and like that. Just I think I found your stuff mainly during this phase, and it's just it's just a blast because signup forms they suck in general. I know mine does, so um, yeah. it was definitely definitely awesome to find this. Um, people I work with run into them all the time, and they're like, oh, man, like, we can't we have something like that? And I'm like, we, we can't. We deserve to wait, like, you know, like, for 30 seconds for, for their email address to be parser, like, you and, know. And also, like, accessibility <laughs> and, like, everything else, like, just be a complete nightmare. Like, I don't even know what this does, like, if, if you select, <laughs> like, motion off, right? It's like, all right, well, it's just a form. But, um, but for, for a short time, like one of the ones I did get to live on CSS tricks, which was pretty cool. So really, so it, it got implemented at least somewhere. But. Oh, that's awesome! That's so good. Um, okay, one more. Uh, you have time for one more? Yeah, yeah. I know I've kept you for a while. Chat, you could. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Chat. I've I've been terrible at checking you all out. Um, I really appreciate. Uh, you, Adam, going in and, and responding. Um, I'm just going to try to catch up real quick. Jay says, wondering what the best UX would be if you wanted a set number of animated characters but the user entered more or less. See, th th this is the kind of stuff that next uh, week I will definitely be better about. Like, I mean, first off, this won't be, <laughs> I, I, I hope this won't be the case next week. Um, again, Adam, I will reimburse you for your minutes. I appreciate this. <laughs> Um, I yeah, really honestly, nice. chat, you y'all you, you are just fantastic. So, uh, I think mean, the best UX would be if you wanted a set number of characters. They're awesome, though. Show, show the roller coaster. Yeah, the roller coaster is so good. Um, let's just, um, let's just, and yeah, Adam, uh, Adam and I were chatting a while back when I was for, no, sorry, Adam, I'm, I'm mixing up everybody now. Jay and I were chatting a while back when I was first starting the newsletter about how. I needed like a really cool form sign up. Wait, the 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 roller coaster. I'll show the non butts one. I don't know how P P G. So the other one's great because it doesn't end in a tunnel. And I'll show everybody in a sec. Alex at Gmail. Come and hit subscribe. It's just 
it's just so cool because no one expects this. Like coming into CodePen and filling out a form, you just don't expect it to do this and then go into a tunnel. So the other one, the second one I'm not clicking, goes into a butt and it's just it's just really funny. Like if you ever see like Pablo Stanley's butts, I, I think I sent that to you, Adam. Uh, it's just it's just funny, right? Butts are funny. So I, I fully appreciate it. And like just the absurdity of some of your code pens is just, it I it's right in my wheelhouse. I love it. So yeah, this is such this a good is one. Really good. Case for the uh, for the squiggle vision, like, effect yep. again, yeah, with that SVG filter, because not, not only did it just like work pretty well, but like there was also a lot of like pixel perfection going on with this one, like, way more than I'd like to admit. And when more than there needed to be, it's one of those ones where I've looked back and I'm like, oh man, like, this could have been so much easier. But like, uh, that squiggle vision kind of rescues it because you can't tell that there's like a just slight like, offset issues and things like that. You know? Oh, that's so, a really smart point. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, like, if, if that's the style you're going for and it's it hits that perfectly, that's that's awesome. Yeah, the displacement map. So, yeah, you, you got a couple of squigglies here. Is, are these the filters that you're hitting? Wait, there's a bunch. Why, um, which, what's the difference between 1, 2, 3, and 40, no? Off, off, yeah, 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 yeah. So, it's, I mean, all of those are just, like, varied, uh, have a varied amount of turbulence applied. So, okay. it, 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 basically, what's happening is you, you just have a... Uh, an animation that's looking through like the four or five of those. So. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So the animation isn't changing one filter and going like one, two, one, two, one, two. It's changing between one, two, three, and four on squiggly one, two, three, and four. Is, is, right, is that right? right. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, like, cool. There's no smooth transition between them, so you don't have to set it up as like a step animation. It can just be set as a standard linear animation because like it's always just going to jump. Yeah, so. Right. Yeah, and that's like the look you're going for. That's perfect. Yeah, I can see that, like, Dr. Katz kind of feel or whatever, so... That's exactly what I was thinking, yeah. That's, that's awesome. I, I always kind of wondered how they did that, because it felt like such a pain to to squiggle the line manually, but, like, something like this would be would be perfect. Love it. Um, we wanted to hit at least one more. Do you, do you, do you have a list in front of you? I can pull it up on, like, my Notion. There was one... Um, let me see real quick. There, there's, there's some that, I, like, always get asked about, so I should probably... I should probably... Dive into those. Um, I'm always like, I'm always thinking like one of the CSS toggles just because I like that was the other phase that I went through that wasn't sign up forms. But um, yeah, here I just copied it on my other computer. I should utilize this as a second computer much more. Um, by the way, copy paste feature between Apple stuff is like one of the greatest things in the world. Has anyone else yeah. like experienced that? Um, but I see what you did there. Nice. Alcoholic. I currently work in QA, but I would love to pursue a career in front end. Does anyone have tips as to what I should start learning? Whoa, love it, Adam. What do you think? Talkaholic works in QA, but wants to pursue a career in 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 front end. Drop a couple tips. Oh gosh, like I mean, what, what I mean, what you should always learn is fundamentals, right? Like just just the, the basics of HTML, CSS, JS, and then. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you ask this in the wrong room, everyone's going to be like, hey, React, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously, don't put your eyes on a framework which people will dangle in front of you until, you know, you've got fundamentals down. So um, I, think, I think that's the, the obvious answer. There's, there's so many great, like, free options out there right now for learning, and there's such a support of community. It's like, you know, I, I kind of I see like the code newbie hashtag blow up all the time. I'm not entirely sure what you know what what it's about necessarily, but I, I just I see so many helpful people. It's like it's generally a very positive community, especially I think compared to many other development communities in general. Software developers like uh, you know stay with, like I would say like if you're just starting out like yeah rip into the fundamentals, go to like something like Free Code Camp. Yeah. Uh, sign up at Dev um, and Whatever you do, don't ever look at Hacker News, like, and you'll do great. <laughs> Hacker News and like Stack Overflow gets 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 it like gets toxic there, yeah, it gets yeah. Toxic there but 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 at the same time, Stack Overflow is like super helpful for debugging stuff, but it apparently can be kind of vicious with like community. But so but yeah, but Hacker News can just kind of yeah. and posting to Reddit is also terrifying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, there's, there's just like way too many 
super awesome good people out there to yeah. like get, get caught up in that. So, you know, you, you'll find the toxicity, but, you you know, it's, it's very easy to also get away from it and dial into, like, who those people are that just, like, there's so many people that just live to, like, help, and it's, it's blows me away, like, day to day, you know, like, the wealth of knowledge that people share, so that's yeah. really awesome. No, I think that's, that's super solid advice, HTML, CSS, yeah, like, just fundamentals. Did, did yeah. that did that kind of help Talkaholic? I hope so. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's um, but feel feel free to reach out to, honestly, like anyone in this chat is uh, incredibly helpful, incredibly kind. Adam's fantastic. Jay's fantastic. Pete's fantastic. Like reach out to anyone. Um, just there's a lot of good people out there, like, like Adam's saying. Uh, feel free to reach out. Lots of people willing to share their knowledge, as Adam is yeah, right yeah. now. So, I leave, I leave the DMs open, you know. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not happy to hear from anybody if anyone You questions. never know when you're going to get a phone number, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so let's check this one out. Is it a normal toggle? No, silly. It's a burrito, and it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so. And it goes both ways. It's so good. I don't even, I don't even know where I would. Wait. Oh, I'm not sure if it. I'm not sure if it goes back. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, it just kind of floats back. Like, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> Perfect. Think I, if I were to redo it, I could probably like unroll it and like just like put it back. But but the too, the demo works. So no JavaScript, right? Yeah. Yep. No JS. So yeah, I had done like a whole series of like a bunch of different food toggles, and I think like Chris Gannon awesome. made some like eggs at some point that were just beautiful and like. One thing that Chris has mastered really well is like he's he's his timing is is amazing. Like if there's one key to like animating your transitions, it's to dial that timing in. Um, and his like the, the eggs that he had done, I just remember were just like buttery smooth and like really really just beautifully done. So, but it just kind of it inspired me to do like really really stupid tackles like this. So, let's just um, pull up Chris. Yeah, Chris. Uh, Chris is yeah, and so I drop him in chat because yeah, I totally agree. He's another one that's just like he's unreal. I would love to have him on if he's out there. Um, I, I know he, he works a, a lot in like Lottie and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know anything about Lottie. Like I, I get it's After Effects and all that, but um, it feels a little bit divorced from front end. But his stuff is just it's so good. And and, and exactly what you said is just he has like an animator's eye for things like like he's able to get that timing and like like squish effects and all all, all those yeah. little little things where it's tough to get sometimes he's able to really nail it so yeah oh, it's like the like the disney principles right i, I don't know if everyone's like turned on to that but like, no but uh, you should explain yeah yeah so i and i actually finally just bought a copy of the illusion of life which is like this this super old disney book and and i remember probably like six or seven years ago seeing Belle Head speak at a conference and, and she was like touting this book left and right. Uh, but at that time I think it was like out of print, but there's basically like the, I think seven basic principles of animation. And it, it, like you had mentioned, there's like squash and stretch and there's like anticipation and delay. There's, you know, so like, um, fundamentally I think like to be a really effective animator, like in, in the web or really any medium, like these, these were like these, and it's some animation that were dialed in like so many years ago, and this is like probably 50s or 60s time, have like, have really held true. Like, you know, today, like, there's still like implementing that, like, gives that, like, the illusion of life, right? It gives that, right. like, real motion of, like, the expectation to follow through, like, what, what you think uh, motion should look like or what feels like natural versus what feels like, you know, digitized. Right. So, so yeah, that's been kind of like a you know viral to me in some ways as far as. as that's far awesome. As yeah. yeah. No, I I, th I think those things are definitely um, like you uh, as a viewer you don't like grasp them, but you know when they're not there and something feels off, like like the anticipation and I forget what the other word was and like the payoff or something like that, right? Like like. Yeah. Yeah, like if, if that doesn't happen in an animation, you're like, oh, something was weird about that, but you can't put your finger on it. It's just one of those like nuanced things that Disney illustrators in like the 60s and 70s or whatever just nailed and have been nailing ever since. But um, burritos. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I wouldn't even say that this is like a great example of like that in practice necessarily because I think right. this is more just like trying to make something ridiculous, but like. Uh, 
yeah, yeah, like, I think, I think if, you, if you're going to stick with CSS animation, like, it's really great. Like, I have just, like, a handy bunch of cubic Bezier snippets that are, like, you know, my kind of go-tos if I need, to, like, an elastic or expo-style, like, animation effect. Um, but, like, at this point, like, I can't recommend Greensock highly enough and, and their product and, like, you know, which is, like, 90% free, which is ridiculous, but it's still yeah. performant and awesome. It comes with all these, like, all this stuff, like, hooked in. So if you can, from a performance standpoint, if you can afford to include a library, like, it's it's awesome. And, and um, yeah, like, it really takes a lot of those boxes and very clear that those guys are, like, super passionate about, you know, like, like those kind of principles and really, really creating, like, realistic and fluid motion effects, which is, which is great, so... Where where are the cubic bezier? I'm I'm scrolling through them. I just have the. Oh, they're, so they're not here. They're, they're not here. There's probably it's probably going to be like a simple. Yeah. It's, you, okay. Like gotcha. This. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Yep. So this is like, this is a few years old at least. Like, um, I don't, I'm not entirely sure when this when this guy was built, but um, like I said, it was like a long string of different food ones. I did like a one that flips a pancake and there was That's like awesome. a, I don't know all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, that's just a lot of fun though um just wanted to let me just go back to all pens um so this one is just i i, I know i said one more i just want to hit, hit this one real quick uh not to advertise your company or, or whatever but you know fun fun side effect i guess of you coming on the uh on on the stream but this one it, it got a little choppy there so i just want to like rerun it um, and, and I think the choppiness was just due to, uh, there we go. There's a lot. Of yeah. But also like I'm, I'm running a lot of things and my MacBook's crying. So, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's, you there's use like CSS for this or, so this is jQuery and well, well, CSS well, well, and splitting. Like CSS, yeah. Like jQuery, which again, probably doesn't need to be there, but that's actually, like the one thing with CSS is when I, if I do something that's a simple animation just like this, like there's not a clean way to restart a CSS animation, you know, like there, there are ways to do it, but if you've gotten far along, like to backtrack and try and implement something that's going to allow you to, to effectively restart it with, you know, without, without JavaScript, like it's forget about it. Right. So, yeah. um, but this is, yeah, this is one of those examples where I spent like, it's going to keep replaying next to, it next to no time, like, getting things set in place and next to way too much time getting the timing like set up because okay like that's like getting things to feel like kind of buttery smooth was was uh, like a chore and dude there was some, you know, just watch it over and over and it just didn't feel like it was there but it's it's well it's 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 seriously there now honestly i told you as soon as you dropped it uh if i did not know better and couldn't see like the actual code um I would say it was After Effects and Lottie or like like 100 like it's it's still crazy to me I, or or at the very least like Green Sock and stuff like um I the the main thing I was kind of curious about was why not Green Sock for this one was there like a medium oh, this, this 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 super like should have been and this is a great use case for it too and even if I'm just using Green Sock to handle CSS animation like it, it, uh, the way that it handles things is, is like generally considerably more performant. One one trick that I'm kind of using here is to like make that barrel roll is I'm bending an SVG path um, and I'm updating the path attribute like via CSS, like which is huh. gonna, it's going to fail on like a ton of browsers. Like so, this is one of those like, hey, don't like probably don't open this outside of like Chrome or Brave or gotcha. something. Gotcha. Like like Safari is probably going to like have a massive freak out when it sees this thing. Um, but yeah, like I, I do love that trick and, and I know Andrew had kind of asked about that too, but like it's, it's a really precise, like, yeah. So you can see it's happening right there with the morph, right. And that's like, that's updating the path attribute, but it's very, very touchy in that those attributes, like the handles and points within your SVG path, like need to match up. So if you've got like, you know, 15 different, you know, like key points and, and handles in your, in your path, like you can't add one on, like it's right. just what's going to just create a choppy effect the same way as it would be a film or a, like a step down versus, you know, a fluid morphing transition. So you can do a pure CSS SVG morphing, um, 
but it takes a lot of kind of like dialing in and making sure that those paths ultimately match, um, you know, at, at the end of it. So, and, and again, that's something like Greensock can do like pretty cleanly without, without having to deal with that, that kind of nonsense. So. Yeah, this just seems like like kind of doing it on on like a hard difficulty or something. Uh, just with CSS, but like I love the uh, is that like a CSS filter or an, or an SVG filter with, with with the roar? Is that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the same one. That's what, like smoothly one again. It's you know, it's, just a, like, it's so versatile, CSS. man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, just such a cool effect. I don't know. I'll probably wind up overusing it one day, but but uh, like you know, yeah. it felt like it kind of worked there, and and yeah, and then like the. I was kind of happy with how that little boxy yeah. CF logo had, had worked out there. That was, I had never played with that one really before, but we had, Kuma was like our service mesh product that we that we internally developed and then we donated to the Cloud Native Network Computing Foundation. So like, this was like, when that happened, I was like, threw this together and just for, you know, just kind of for funsies and then, yeah. yeah. Pretty excited, so. It's it's so cool. Like every little part of it, like the the intro and then the bear drop sound. Like you've you've got a nice animation in in, in each piece. It's just a nice nice code pen, man. Thanks. Love yeah. it. Well, um, I think we've we've already gone a, a half over half hour over where I promised you we would go, um, and we we had about half of the stream that I promised you also because of. Uh, all kinds of audio fun. Thank you for helping me de de debug that. Um, oh wait, we didn't get that debugged, but still, thank you for helping me. I forgot I was holding a phone. I'm like, good thing you found that site and we got this working. Oh wait, right, I'm talking to you on the phone. Eh, it is what it is, right? Um, we will hopefully have this uh, debugged for next week, and I haven't announced this yet. Uh, but Jay, who is actually in the chat, is going to be our guest next week. So I hope. Everyone who's here uh, can join us then. I'm going to be going through his code pens. He is another amazing front end developer. I was about to say designer, but yeah, kind of both, right? Both creative coders, just awesome. So, um, join us next week for Jay. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, but Adam, man, uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled that I was able to have you on. I'm, I'm, and thank you for hanging in with me. Uh, please. <laughs> Go go follow Adam on Twitter on CodePen. Um, what's your Twitter? It, it's Cobra underscore Winfrey again. Is, is That's it right. yeah, yeah. cool? So he's Cobra Winfrey pretty much everywhere. Um, everyone knows it is probably the best handle on the internet. Honestly, it's just it's just really solid. It's 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 funny and it's memorable. So uh, please go go follow him. Go do all that good stuff um, and. Give him a uh, round of applause in chat for, for hanging with us and showing us how he makes these these awesome code pens. So, Adam, thanks again. I really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate All right. it. Yeah, and uh, thank you to everyone in chat for hanging with me and uh, putting up with this. Um, if you're not already subscribed, head over to frontend.horse. I'm going to uh, try to shoehorn this into a newsletter episode or a, a newsletter issue. Um, now that we've got the awesome information from Adam, we can now uh, maybe flesh it out in some text and just figure it out. So if you feel like this issue in your inbox in a couple weeks, go ahead over and subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you next week. Thank you so much for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure. Have a good one. See ya. Thanks, guys. See ya.